Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17 speaks of a great home going. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. The entire group comes to sing, My Home, Sweet Home. We have noted to you many times that there is a delay between the recording of Faith to Live By and its release. And so as I stand before you to record this program, it's March the 30th. Nine days ago, my mom, Mrs. H.H. H. Barber, that is Margaret Elizabeth Barber, went home to be with the Lord. And we rejoice that the pain, the struggle, the suffering, is all behind her. She was 99 years of age and seven months, and she is now reunited with Dad in glory, who preceded her by just five months. And they are now together in glory, rejoicing round the throne of God. In Mum's honor, in weeks ahead, I am going to be preaching from Mum's Bible, which I hold in my hand, and I want to read to you right now Mum's, perhaps her favorite passage of Scripture, Psalm 27, and there's a mark right around Psalm 27, and also a bracket beside the first and the last verse. Hear this, and I present it to you in honor of my mum, who we buried right beside Dad just yesterday at Elmwood Cemetery here in the heart 
of Winnipeg. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock, and now mine head shall, shall be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord. When I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou saidst, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help, leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And we say in our hearts, Amen to that. The male quartet now comes to sing face to face, and then that is followed by Heidi Taves singing The Holy City.
Faith to Live By has just released a new CD and book project entitled The Sermons in the Sermon. It's Luke's record of the earliest preaching of the first century. The messages which Peter, Stephen, Philip, and Paul preached and Luke took and recorded in the Acts of the Apostles. 
21 of them I used on Faith to Live By in a series three years ago. I've taken these sermons now and I've included them in this book that they might be a personal blessing to you and that you might also use them perhaps in a Bible study setting. Also as a bonus to the book, we have included two audio CDs of readings from the book of Acts and these are there from the King James Version for your blessing wherever you move about. Ask for your copy of the sermons in the sermon when you write to Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C 2H6. You may also call us toll free at 1 833 367 3852 or our website faith to live by.ca also has a means of you contacting us. Thank you for being with us and may these resources be a rich blessing to you in addition to the radio and television ministry of Faith to Live By. Rick Bowring now comes to sing, The Lord is My Light. shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? Though a host of men were laid against me, Yet shall not my heart be afraid. And though there rose a war against me, yet will I put my trust in Him. For in the time of trust, he shall hide me in his tabernacle. Yea, in the secret places of his dwelling shall he hide me. And say, shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? Of whom then shall I be afraid? This music today I have specifically selected in honor of Mum, and most especially this final song sung by Rick and played by Sherry in honor of Mum as she delighted ever so much in hearing that song whenever she heard it. Taken from one of her favorite passages, as I said, Psalm 27, the Lord is my light. This is set in a portion of the Psalms where David is especially highlighted as the psalm writer. 
We begin with Psalm 23 in our consideration just now, where David says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In Psalm 24, David declares, The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Psalm 25, David says, Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Psalm 26, Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord. Therefore, I shall not slide. And Psalm 27, The Lord is my light and my salvation. We consider David to be a remarkable individual right from his youth. When he attacks the bear and the lion as the animals come and they seek to devour the flock, which David has responsibility for overseeing day and night. And David, he overpowers and he slays both the lion and the bear, and he makes sure that his father's sheep are protected and that they find rich pasture. David understood the responsibilities. He goes out later on and he slays also the giant Goliath. And what a remarkable event that is. And giving the armies of Israel that great victory on the battlefield over the Philistines. Later on, he would be hunted. He would be needlessly sought out. He would be chased and pursued by King Saul. Though David was not his enemy, yet Saul was so bent upon destroying David's life and making sure that he did not succeed him, David would go from place to place and he would certainly need a light. He would need a lamp that would see him forward. And he says, I do not trust in any little wick of a candle. I do not trust in any little bit of, an, of oil in a pottery vessel. I trust in the Lord, for it is the Lord who is the one who lights my path, who guides my steps. He was the one who was there with me when I needed as a youth to stand strong and to stand against the enemies that were coming to devour my charge. He was there on the battlefield with those smooth stones in my bag and that one that I slung and it sunk in the giant's forehead and I cut off his head. And David would know that the Lord would be with him and that the Lord would be illuminating, that he would be guiding and shining on his way that he might know. Sometimes I'm sure he was perplexed and unsure of which way he should go, but his trust was always in the Lord. That's a good word for you and for me. The Lord can be our light. He can be the one who shines on the way when we do not know where to go, where to place our foot. It's good to say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? There is no reason when we realize that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, that he rules over all and that there is nothing that escapes his notice that we are under his loving care. David says, though an host, a great army, a great camp should come against me, my heart shall not fear. David says, but what I really desire, the one thing that I desire is that I might dwell, that I might be right there in the presence of the Lord to behold his beauty. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. David's confidence rings out. Even, he says, should his father and his mother forsake him, he realizes that God is the one who is absolutely faithful, that he will not be forsaken. The Lord will take him up. And so he says to God, teach me, teach me thy way, O Lord. 
Lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. And the final word that David says, after all of this consideration of his own journey, of his own experiences, of those times of struggle when the Lord has been right there with him, caring for him, comforting him, strengthening him, being that shield, being that fortress, being that safe tower into which he could go. The final word is a word to you and to me. David says, considering all of this, he says, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. That is good counsel. Our world is always in a panic. It is looking for an answer and an answer now. But when we come and when we wait upon the Lord, sometimes we find that we don't receive the answer as quickly as we would wish. But David's experience was that there is no better place than simply to be in the presence of God, to be waiting upon him for his clear direction, for his answer. So he says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Don't let your heart become faint or troubled or trembling. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. And again, he repeats it. Wait, wait, I say, upon the Lord. Oh, friend, wait upon the Lord and seek his face and do that even today. Yes, there's room. And the cross for you. Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C. 2H6.